Welcome back AP Chemistry students, Unit 8, Acid-Based Chemistry. Today we will be talking about Unit 8.4, Hydrolysis. Hydrolysis breaks down into the words water breaking. So in this lesson we are going to break water into its two parts because remember water can self-ionize into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So today we are going to look at compounds that can break that water into its two parts. So when a acid and a base mix, you might remember from eighth grade that they will neutralize one another by producing water and then some salt. And you were told that they neutralize one another and bring the pH to 7 because of the water. But that's not the whole story because in addition to baking water, they make a salt. And salts can favor either the acidic side or the basic side of that water, producing solutions that are either acidic or basic. It is extremely rare that you end up with a neutral salt, one that doesn't favor one or the other. Most salts will cause a solution to be either an acidic solution or a basic solution. So the salts will separate the water into hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions based on what made them. If you have a strong acid that reacted with a weak base, the salt itself will become an acidic salt. If you have a weak acid with a strong base, you'll produce a base, a basic salt. The reason it's exceedingly rare that you end up with a neutral salt is because so few compounds are strong acids are strong bases, but the only time you would end up with a neutral salt is when you have a strong acid with a strong base, and it will be relatively neutral because even something made from a strong acid like, say, hydrochloric acid and a strong base like sodium hydroxide will make table salt, sodium chloride, which does favor a basic solution slightly, but it comes down to the difference in the Ka and Kb of those salts. So again, for this course at this level, we are simply going to say that a strong acid and a strong base produce a neutral salt. So in order to write a hydrolysis equation, you need to look at what acid and what base went into making that salt and then determine which scenario are you in. Whichever is the strong, that wins. Think of it like a tug of war. The strong acid against a, version, a weak base, the strong acid will pull our equilibrium towards the acid side. So. So to do this, you need to look at the anions and cations of the salt. Copper nitrate, the anion nitrate had to have come from nitric acid, while the cation of copper had to have come from hydroxide. <clears throat> copper hydroxide is weak. It's not a group two or group one metal hydroxide, so therefore it's weak. Nitric acid has to be a strong acid. It's one of the six that we're supposed to memorize. Nitric, sulfuric, perchloric, and then all the halides with the exception of hydrogen. So <clears throat> we're going to say that this is an acidic salt. Now the reason that it's an acidic salt is because the strong acid contains a anion that is always going to be soluble. Nitrate is not going to be in our reaction. So when we show the hydrolysis, we will take out the strong ion, either the anion in the case of an acidic salt or the cation in the case of a basic salt, and write what's left. So we're left with copper as our ion. We said this is an acidic salt, so we'll show it producing hydrogen ions. Now this is called a hydrolysis reaction, so we've got to write in our water. In order for copper and water to produce hydrogen ions, the water is going to have to give one 
of the hydrogen ions up, producing insoluble copper hydroxide. So this is our hydrolysis reaction for copper nitrate, showing that it is an acidic salt. In barium chloride, the barium had to have come from barium hydroxide. The cation is always going to be some cation hydroxide. And the chloride ion had to have come from hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. Beryllium hydroxide, while being while beryllium is a group two metal, it was that exception. So I'm sorry to say that we're gonna say this is a weak uh, base. So the strong wins the tug of war. So we are left with beryllium as our only ion left. That has to react with water. We said that it's an acidic salt, so the first thing we should do is show it producing an acid, either hydronium or the hydrogen ion. In order for it to produce the hydrogen ion, beryllium would have to take the hydroxide half of water, giving us beryllium hydroxide, and then we simply have to balance this reaction. Water can also be rewritten as hydrogen hydroxide. Our one hydroxide cannot become two hydroxides, so we need two hydroxides. That gives us two hydrogens that must become two hydrogens. So here is the hydrolysis of beryllium hydroxide. I need some space, so I'm going to wipe these clean and let's start on some basic salts. Sodium hypochlorite the hypochlorite would have had to come from hypochlorous acid and the sodium had to have come from sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base. It's a group one or two hydroxide, so it is strong. Hypochlorous acid is a weak acid. So the strong wins the tug of war. Sodium is always soluble, so it's not going to be in our reaction. The hypochlorous ion is going to produce hydroxide anions. We said it's a basic salt, so we need to back that up to say that this is a basic salt by reacting it with water. So when water splits and that hydroxide is released, that hydrogen is going to have to be picked up by the, the hypochlorite ion producing hypochlorous acid and the hydroxide anion. Calcium dichromate, calcium would have had to have come from calcium hydroxide and the dichromate ion had to have come from dichromic acid. Dichromic acid is not one of our six strong acid acids while calcium hydroxide is a strong base. So the strong wins that tug of war, leaving us with the dichromate anion because this is a basic salt. So since it is a basic salt, let's show it producing hydroxide. Now that hydroxide has to come from one of the water molecules. So if it produces hydroxide, that leaves this hydrogen free to float around and pick up the dichromate ion, producing dichromic acid and the hydroxide anion. To balance this reaction, we have two hydrogens, so we will have needed two waters to make that happen. That would give us two hydroxides. So there is the hydrolysis of, di of calcium dichromate. So with those in mind, that is hydrolysis. You'll notice that a lot of the times in a hydrolysis equation, personally, I prefer writing water as hydrogen hydroxide because it gives me a clear idea of where the hydrogens went and where the hydroxides went. So our next bit of practice, 
We are asked to predict whether an acidic, basic, or neutral salt, and show it with the appropriate equations, in other words, to show the hydrolysis of each. Sodium acetate, the sodium ion would have had to have come from sodium hydroxide as a base, and the acetate anion had to come from acetic acid. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base, while acetic acid is a weak acid, so this must be a basic salt. So with sodium out of the way, what we are left with is the acetate anion. And since it's a basic salt, let's show it producing a base or hydroxide ions. In order to produce those hydroxide ions, we are going to show the hydrolysis. We're going to show it breaking water. Again, you can write water as H2O. Personally, I prefer to write it as hydrogen hydroxide because that shows clearly where my hydroxides came from. In order to free that hydroxide, that hydrogen had to have been picked up by the acetate anion producing acetic acid. The nitrate ion had to have come from nitric acid, while the ammonium ion had to have come from, well, we could say it came from ammonium hydroxide, or we could say that it came from ammonia, all right? In either case, whether you say that it's ammonium hydroxide or ammonia, you would actually label these both weak bases. So since ammonium is a weak base and, um, so, and nitric acid is a strong acid, the strong wins the tug of war. This is gonna be an acidic salt. So what's left over is the ammonium cation. And we said that it's going to be an acid. So let's show it as an acid. Now it is going to react with water to produce, well, to produce what? In order for it to produce an acid, it had to give off a hydrogen, right? This is what we've done for all of them. So what happens? What do you end up with? You end up with ammonium hydroxide. That is a fine answer, but there is a better one. But what's another way we could show an acid being produced? You're smart, you're pretty, gosh darn people like you. You remember that when every time we write hydrogen ions, what we really mean is the hydronium cation. And if we do that, then we can show it producing the weak base that we expect to see. Because in order to produce hydronium cations, the ammonium would lose the hydrogen to water, producing ammonia the weak base that we anticipated when we broke our ions. This is a better answer than showing that it produces ammonium hydroxide. All right, our final example, we have aluminum sulfate. Sulfate had to have come from sulfuric acid, while aluminum had to have come from aluminum hydroxide. Aluminum hydroxide is a weak base. Sulfuric acid is a strong acid. Therefore, this has to be an acidic salt. We're going to be left with aluminum cations. Since this is an acidic salt, let's show it producing those hydrogen ions first by separating the water. Aluminum cations are going to pull up the hydroxide anions from water that are released when water forms hydrogen ions. So we end up with aluminum hydroxide and hydrogen ions as a product. To balance this, three hydroxides would have to come from three waters, and those three waters could release three hydrogen ions. So there is our acidic hydrolysis for aluminum sulfate. 
So with that in mind, you can f do page 22 in your packet. Next class, you'll have a free response quiz where I'll ask you to write the a reaction from the KA, meaning I will provide you what the reaction's KA is. And you are going to have to unpack this into a chemical reaction. I'll then give you the pH which you can convert into the original concentration by remembering that pH can give you the concentration of the hydrogen ions and with simple algebra you can determine what this denominator was. So solve for this denominator given one of the numerators. After that, I'm going to ask what's the net ionic equation of an acid and a base. Remember, acids and bases, when combined, produce water. So what is the net ionic equation for when an acid and base produce water? Show a hydrolysis, just like we just did. Why are weak acids weak is your next free response answer. I'll, I'll be looking for you to discuss the amount of oxygens or the electron density around an oxyanion. I'll ask you to find the PE, I'll ask you to find the concentration of a weak acid again, probably a different one than the one before. And then what is the pH of a mixture of acids? Remember that the acid with the largest Ka is going to be first. And then it's a common ion problem to determine the other. With that being said, that brings us to the end of this. Next class, you'll have that quiz, and we will begin discussing titration curves. I will see you all then.